Have a nice day, guys. scored another victory in our effort to stop the flow of drugs. Uh, they are our major suppliers. Because of today's success, we captured the people who, according to the complaints and indictment, are the source of the heroin in Thailand, the people who transport it around the globe, and the people who distribute it on our streets. Unfortunately, all of the people who made this happen, virtually hundreds of agents and... Uh, this is, I think, a graphic example of the new organized crime in the United States. And this group, 15 years ago from Nigeria, began as individual body smugglers of heroin in small amounts for other organized crime syndicates and now have progressed to the point where they are as powerful as any in the world. It is unique in that mentioned in that many of the people who are in the decision-making aspects of these syndicates are female, uh, which we have not run into in organized crime syndicates before. Uh, the key... Uh, and often what we would see is, although the, the map here shows from Bangkok, for example, back to, uh, to Boston... In the virtual world, he was the undisputed leader of the globe's biggest child abuse site. An online network of pedophiles in dozens of countries. Everything from babies and toddlers right up to, you know, what they would describe as jail bait. The material that was particularly being produced by this group, we knew was happening almost live and on demand. He's a predator. Um, yeah, an extremely dangerous individual as far as I'm concerned. To catch this predator would take a unique operation, involving the coordinated efforts of police from Germany, the Netherlands, Denmark, the United States and Australia, who would piece together the man's identity one clue at a time. We knew information about the administrator of the site and we knew uh, there were certainly uh, significant suggestions that he was an Australian. And as soon as we had a sniff that we were dealing with an Australian who was potentially the lead administrator, uh, well, that presents a challenge that we were prepared to take on. The head administrator presided over a site that was strictly hierarchical, with members who shared original material of them abusing children promoted, while others were punished for not meeting expectations. So to be a member, you had to have access to child exploitation material and be posting it onto the site for others to, to have and that had to be an ongoing thing. And if you'd failed to do so, you'd be removed from the site. The level of material, the amount of material you posted was significant enough, high enough amount of material, then you could apply to move up the ranks and become a VIP. 
There was no bigger VIP than the head administrator. And the suspected Australian had one of the world's best victim identification specialists on his trail. I had photographs of him potentially abusing seven different children, all preschool age, boys and girls, different ethnic backgrounds. Um, somewhere at the back of your mind, there's something saying, you know, who the hell is this guy that he's got access to those children? For 20 years, Paul Griffiths has trawled through images of child abuse for clues to the identities of victims and perpetrators. To unmask the head administrator, Griffiths would have to piece together a scattering of leads. Among them, an unusual greeting the man used online. And one of the things that I noticed was that on a number of occasions he's used that specific greeting, Hyas, H-I-Y-A-S. Uh, after ruling out women who used Hyas as a greeting, and after sifting through thousands of sites and discussion boards, Griffiths found a man who consistently used the word. That led to a Facebook page, a photo of a VW utility and a city. I mean, the Facebook profile was completely bogus, but it did have that clue for Adelaide. It did point us in the direction of Adelaide. I actually found uh, him asking questions online about how to raise the suspension on his four-wheel drive. He made mistakes. But any one of those mistakes in isolation was not enough to identify him. Good afternoon, Special Crimes Branch. How many of you got there? Who've got in the team? But the VW Ute would help piece together the jigsaw. Uh, he's actually posted a photograph of his vehicle and he also signs off his messages with the name Shannon. So that from the information we've got from that registration plate, it would appear to be registered to someone by the name of Shannon McCool. Queensland's Task Force Argos finally had a name. It was time to brief their counterparts in South Australia's Sex Crimes Investigation Branch. There's been a number of strings of information that have now come together that the risk is in your jurisdiction. The risk was massive because 32-year-old Shannon McCool was charged by the state with looking after dozens of vulnerable children. And he'd been proudly posting evidence of his own sexual abuse of those in his care. Looks like he's also uh, employed with Families SA as some sort of care worker in the southern suburbs. Uh, that's obviously quite concerning, I, I imagine, definitely at your end. Uh, what I can see so far, there seems to be seven different children, so three girls and four boys, uh, and we're talking uh, pretty hardcore material on uh, all of the children. It was probably the worst I've ever seen. You know, the material's horrific, there's no other word for it. And he's, he'd probably had access to hundreds of children. With McCool able to access children at will, the Queenslanders and South Australians coordinated a plan. Obviously we have to move as quickly as possible. Uh, Read children at risk. Getting a live capture is, is critical. Well, basically, John, as, as, as soon as you guys can get down here, um, you know, we'll be going in. Obviously, uh, what you've said, it's imperative that, uh, you know, uh, we get him whilst he's got his computer running. Four days later, police moved in. Myself and a colleague um, attended his address 7 o'clock at night and it was um, as simple as knocking on his door. He opened the door and before he had the opportunity to do anything, um, he was secured in the premises. He was a bit shook up and very quiet. It was the point he was almost physically sick at one point. It was from this house in suburban Adelaide that Shannon McCool secretly ran a global internet child pornography ring that had tens of thousands of members. Rising to head administrator, McCool had complete control over the network, a role only made possible by his unfettered access to children in his care. The public servant, who'd repeatedly abused vulnerable kids as young as 18 months old, was quickly identified by his own depraved internet posts. We had some images of an individual we believe to be him, the individual from the site, um, sexually abusing children. Um, he had distinguishing mark of a freckle on his finger. I think it became apparent when we asked to look at his hands, uh, and particularly when his hands were photographed, and um, the famous freckle on his finger was uh, pointed out and confirmed. Shannon McCool was in custody, but Task Force Argos wasn't finished. 
it was time for phase two of its operation. Phase two for me was to take over the network, assume control of the network and ultimately identify as many criminal offences committed by members of the network as we could before ultimately destroying it. But infiltrating and running a global child abuse site presented a dilemma for Argos. How to keep the network going without allowing the sexual abuse of children to continue? There is, there is just no way on earth that we are going to allow uh, the sexual abuse of children to continue. So we closed membership. Nobody gets in. Effectively, we cage the rats. Two task force Argos detectives pretended to be Shannon McCool, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And it can mess with your head. So it's not something you want to do for really long, protracted periods of time. But this covert operation would go on for 10 months and the Argos infiltrators would help authorities round up pedophiles across the world, from the United States to Europe and Asia. We're stretching the bounds of what has ever been done before. As each of these caged rats was rounded up, they were replaced by undercover police. But John Rouse refuses to measure the operation's success in arrests. I think in terms of the identification of child victims, that was... And that's what it was all about. Uh, there was a lot of kids that are in a better place now because of what happened across the, across the globe. Potentially hundreds of kids? Yeah. This month, Shannon McCool was sentenced to a record 35 years in prison with a non-parole period of 28 years. Sometimes things are a little bit beyond comprehension, to be honest. Um, but that is how calculating it was, so... Um, yeah, I, sometimes it's very hard to understand how he could have done what he did. We see ourselves as the lucky ones in that we can actually do something about it rather than just sitting back and thinking, oh, that's terrible and there's nothing we can do.